Namaskar. Welcome to the next session on Establish a Healthy Foundation. We are going to introduce to you the two asanas, Pada Hastasana, arms and legs, the one that everyone has been asking me where to find this asana, and also another standing asana, uh, the chair pose, Sahaj Utkatasana. Yes, Sahaj Utkatasana. Let's, uh, let's start with some warm-ups, with the neck a little bit, and then we'll go into the asanas. All right, let's uh, stretch the neck a little bit. On this Slowly release it, very slowly. Big, very slowly. Do not rush to come out of it. Because you have stayed it for a long time, so you might pull a muscle to do that. Just allow it to go into it naturally. Don't force so strong. You're not forcing it, you're just putting your hand there and uh, gradually stretching. Don't lock your knees because you're standing. The simple stre- neck stretch is the best. Um, in the clinical environment, this is usually some of the simple exercises I would suggest for releasing neck tension. Very slowly releasing it. Let's do diagonally. That means at the angle. Slowly releasing it, breathing in and out. Don't worry about your breath. Breathe as you need it on the other side. This is muscle here. They're stretching. I'm not really stretching so much, it's just giving, um, allowing it to move. So it allows the uh, prana to move in those areas. Very slowly releasing it. Very, very slowly. Just neck down. I'll just rotate halfway. Not all the way. Back. Out of it. And then the other side, going down. Very slowly. And back. 
just have a roll and go out of it. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Side. Center. Side. Center. This. This is not. You're not uh, using your air, your your muscle. You're just letting go, swinging, letting go, swinging. Go onto your toes as you swing, letting go, swinging. I'm not making any effort. I'm not carrying anything. I'm not carrying the weight. I am letting go, swinging, go on your toes. Swinging. Then swing this way. Swinging. And then tapping. 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 Lifting up, letting go. Tapping. Tapping. Just Go. And I want you to inhale. You can do a little bit of stretch on the back, exhaling. Bend the knees if you need to. Exhaling. I'm going to move this way for you to see. Bend the knees. Inhale. Exhale, go into cactus pose. And straightening. Going down. Straight the legs. Keep the legs straight. Open up the legs. Go into this pose. Almost like an elephant. <laughs> and then resting one arm down. Lift up, lift up the other arm up. Give the right arm. Stay down, left, stay, looking up, the head is also turned, down, do one more time, engage your abs, back of the leg is straight, if it's a problem then bend the knees, stay for a while, looking up to the ceiling, and down to the ground. Again, to the ceiling, breathing out. Back. Then the left other arm, left arm up. Looking to the ceiling, engaging the neck muscles engage. Looking down. And up. And down. Palms nearer to you. Bend the knees. Scooping. Coming up. Exhaling. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhaling. And the least fingers going up. To stretch the toes and your toes coming up, going stretching, exhaling, and release. Let's stay in Tadasana. <coughs> we'll go and do the pose, Padahastasana. Knees are not locked. Shoulders down, soften. In your eyes, you'll start the pose. Padahastasana, hands and feet pose. So watch me first inhaling. There are different variations to do this, but generally it's moving on the left, right, forward, and back. 
lengthening, exhaling to your left side. You may look forward for now. You may keep the arm up, straight up, or this way, that way. It doesn't affect the chakras. I mean, some, of us, some of us may like to have an extra stretch on the side, maybe here. But just for now, I'm going to do this position. Breathing out, and then breathing in, slowly coming up. Exhaling to the other side. Focus on one point. Feel that rhythm. Inhaling, exhaling. And inhaling up. Exhaling me. Rotate your arms into exhalation. You bend the knees slightly. You may hold the big toe or your ankles or your calf or your knees or your thighs or even higher up if you need to. Just in the exhaling position. Inhale. We bend the knees slightly if you need to, coming up. And get your abs, your abdominal muscles. Some of us may need to exhale. And then inhale and continue back. Exhale, the second time is faster. Coming up, releasing. I'm going to this way to show you. So, inhaling. Exhaling. Lifting up the heel may help in some cases it, to uh, not strain the knee so much. Exhaling to the left side. Look in front. If you want to give the neck a little stretch, you may want to look down. It does help with the extra stretch of the neck. Even on the side, that affects that. But focus on one point. Choose the, the, the movement. Stay on that. Do not change the direction. The stillness is important. Inhaling. Coming up. Exhaling the other side. Inhaling, coming up. Again, we want to lower the arm in front or may not. Exhaling, we swing the arms. Again, we bend the knees if you want to. Exhale from the belly, exhaling, breathing out. Or keep the legs straight if you can. May touch the floor or the toes or the ankles or the calves or the knees. Breathing out in the exhalation state. Inhaling, coming up. We bend the knees if you need to, otherwise you don't have to. Inhaling, more up. Inhaling breath to the upper body. So you're able to extend if you need to. And some people, we need to, the breath helps to hyperextend. The shoulders coming up a little bit. So it helps to hyperextend in the pose. If the neck is very weak, otherwise it's about you don't have to go so far. Don't hyperextend the neck. Exhaling. Inhale. The second part is faster. Okay, we'll do again. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale to the right. Inhale. Exhale. Forward bend. Inhale. Backward bend. Exhale. Inhaling. Exhale. 
inhaling, inhaling up and rest. Again, you just want to see how much is it to bend the back. Now, don't hyper extend uh, the back like this. Make sure that you're not hyper extending, over exaggerating. So, in some cases, we're, we're keeping the back straight using a hip, pushing a hip backward, bending from the hip. In some cases, we may need to round the back a little bit to take off the pain on the back in uh, arthritic condition. Otherwise, keep the back straight, bending forward, exhaling from the belly, from the pelvic, breathing out completely as you go down. And as you come up, breathing in to higher parts, it helps you assist you to hyperextend and also not to hyperextend the neck. So it prevents straining the neck too much in that way. So, and then exhaling and inhaling. The breath helps you to move in the four direction. Let's try again. Let's do next round, inhaling. We're going to do eight rounds. If I can count properly, we have done three, I think. Exhaling to the left side. Inhaling. I'm just keeping my arms straight up because I like to feel the stretch on in my this area, the lumbar quadratus lumborum. Inhaling up. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhaling. In the front, uh, we do slight different bending and movement. Inhaling. Exhaling to your left side. Left side first. This extra pull doesn't affect the chakra so much, so it's perfectly fine. Look in front. Inhale. Exhaling. You just pull the stretch a different part of the body slightly. Reaching up to the bottom. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Up. And release. You will come to Namaskar if that's what you want. Again, inhale. Exhaling left. If you want to put the head down, look down if you like to. To have the extra stretch. You feel more on the side. Inhaling. Exhaling the other side. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Put in Namaskar. So they are different. I show you a little bit of variation. Don't worry about that. More or less, they are they're not going to affect the position of the bending to the left, to the right, forward and backward, which is mostly where it affects your even the, the, the chakras. Inhaling with um, three more rounds. Exhaling to the left. Inhale to the right. Inhale. 
الهيلين السيلين I'm going to do this way so you can see another angle as well. Two more rounds. There are about eight set, eight rounds you can do. Or you can do less, of course. Um, and the holding of breath, generally I do about eight seconds or less, depending on your capacity. Some of us need it less and you increase that holding, of the, holding duration. Um, some of us may need the eight seconds, so or slightly more. It's still perfectly fine, but do not overdo it. More is always not necessarily better. So inhaling, exhaling forward, slowly to the left. I mean, left side first. So you're breathing out and holding that. Not breathing. Inhaling, coming up. Exhaling to the other side, left, right side. You start with the left and then right. Inhale, exhale. Inhaling. Exhaling, and the up. Again, the arms can be straight, can be side up. Does not matter. Last round. Watch when you have low blood pressure. I usually inhaling coming up. I will pause. I will breathe out, and I will breathe in to come back. So you don't want to have a blackout. That watch your breath, especially coming up. Continuously at the back and bending to the back can be very straining on the neck as well. Inhaling, exhaling. I want to go to the max. Inhale, exhaling to the other side, right. The right arm reaching, trying to reach the feet. <laughs> Inhaling, exhaling, forward bend. Inhale. Inhaling. Okay, just stand in Tadasana. We are going to do one more standing pose. So just stand, or you could do Shavasana if you like. It's quite um, trying actually. Let's go to Shavasana because it can be very straining on the back. Um, make sure that you're comfortable. Just see the difference. Padahasana is very powerful. It's very good for keeping your health, especially women's health, men's health, everyone. It's very useful for general well-being because of the movement, the four-directional movement. Just see the difference in your body, in your mind. After this very... I, would, I always think it's a very essential pose to do.
really, really nice pose. Okay, roll to the right side. You see both nostrils are predominant. I'm going to invite you to stand again. And we we'll do a, one of the standing poses, or rather it's not a, chair, a standing pose, it's a sitting pose, but in the standing way. It's called Sahaj Utkatasana, a simple chair pose. All right. We have done some warm-up, so it should be enough. So let me show you how it's done. It's, you can do that for three times. It usually go into a... You imagine that you're sitting on a chair, but there is no chair behind you. So you're trying to keep the back straight in this position, the arms, as you assuming the position of the arms of the chair, like that. It can be very painful for, I mean, you know, warming up the muscles just above your knee, your knees. Slowly, slowly, very carefully coming out of the pose. It's the hardest, the most dangerous part is coming, going in and out of the pose. It affects the knee. So if you have dodgy knees, just be careful how you do it. Uh, but pay attention so that you do not pull a muscle or something while doing it. Uh, generally, it's safe if you are very slow. You do it carefully, slowly. Uh, just some variation, I want to sh uh, different angle I want to show you. <coughs> We can do for three, four, four times. I'm going to do again now. Um, and some people define that it's easy to have an arch a little bit under, lift up the arch of the feet so that it's easy to get into the pose. Um, it's not about how straight you look like, but go with what the body is able to to assume the pose of a chair. So the arms may be here. Maybe I'm lifting my feet a little bit so that it's easy for me to get into it. You can, and then later on get into the pose. Arms can be here. Sometimes the arms can be easier if it's here. It triggers the shoulders very much. Some of us may find it easy if we put the arms here to get into the pose. So the variations are there, but generally it's a sitting pose, like a chair sitting pose. It triggers, uh, strengthen the muscles of the legs, the nerves, of the legs, also strengthen the upper part of the body very much. We assume it for about 30 seconds or less, and then the, generally the muscles of the body is engaged in this pose. Can come up from the pose, especially your abs, abdominal muscles, the back muscles. You might think that only the knees are screaming, but uh, actually you are engaging. Try to engage the entire body muscles into the pose, and then you feel less um, strain on the knees. We're going to do again. Okay. You can do for 30 seconds, or how much time you are able to manage in the pose. So let's get into it. Again. This pose actually helps to strengthen the knees. I've done it. Um, initially, when you have knee pain, it's quite a struggle. But generally, of course, if you have acute conditions, you should not do it. But after that, slowly, the chronic pain, you can help remove certain grievances. But um, it has to be done carefully. I'm lifting my arm just to see the effects of my pulse. Engage your abs. I'm, I'm talking about your abdominal muscles. Very, very slowly out of the pose. This direction. Abs, back, chair. Let's try again. I'm trying to go low and see if I'm going low. I'm more forward bending, so I don't really want to do that, but let's try the variation and see where you feel the effects. Hmm. 
very recently begin to come out of the pose. Try to maintain that spine when you go in and out of the pose. Try to maintain the uh, firmness of the spine as you go in and out of the pose. You're not, uh, you know, that your breath, the awareness of the moving, the movement coming in and out, that's the very important part. So you don't create any pain in your back and all that. Mm. Yep, so we have done. You could do this for four rounds, the Utkata Vajrasana. We've done four, if I'm not wrong. If you like, let's try one more. And we finish up with Shavasana. One last time. Four rounds, about 30 seconds. And slowly coming up the pose. Let's go. Sit. So finish up with Shavasana. And if this is the last pose, with massage and Shavasana. Don't escape it, even if you're going to do for one minute. It's useful to benefit from the asana. Um, if there's anything else, the contraindications for the last pose, uh, such Utkatasana, of course, if you have inflammation of the spine, neck, knees, ankles, toes, any areas that will but in ball in the pose, you should abstain from this pose. Otherwise, it can be very useful in strengthening muscles, nerves, joints of the body. Thank you and see you at the next session of Establish a Healthy Foundation. Namaskar.